Hey, it's Dan with SWI today. How to dig in frozen ground, how we dig in frozen ground. So we have three different augers that we are going to use today to demonstrate how to dig in frozen ground. We have a solid formation auger. It takes square teeth and it's carbide on the tip. This one is a dirt auger, but this one we're gonna use twice. So right now we just have plain teeth on it. No carbide on these teeth whatsoever and on the pilot bit. Once we do one round, one hole with this auger, we're gonna change everything out to carbide outers, carbide inners, and a carbide fishtail. So we're gonna run this one twice. We're gonna run it once with all this stuff on and once with all the carbide on. Our last auger is a rock auger. All these augers are the exact same size. They're all nine inch. All we gotta do is just watch the time and see what outperforms what and the best way to dig a hole in the frozen ground. Our ground today is frozen. What are we thinking of? I'm gonna say about we we'll go for 22 inches, is what I'm guessing. So this is gonna be a really good video because we have so much frost. So this right here is the solid formation auger and it has the square teeth. The head looks totally different than these other two heads. This right here is intended for solid sandstone, maybe even some frost. Okay, so originally we we're gonna go ahead and just do four holes because we were gonna run each auger one time. We thought about that. We're gonna actually do eight holes because that machine has normal flow and high flow. We're gonna do one hole and normal flow, the other hole and high flow. Let's talk about this pin. So this is the pin that we use. We like this pin because you can put your hand here. When it's not in motion, you're changing it out. And you can actually grab it and put it right in. It's a lot easier. And if you're looking for something like that, see the link below. So all we're gonna do before we continue drilling any more holes is we're just gonna see how far that frost is actually in the ground. So that's why he ran the auger down a couple times as he's trying to clean it out because somebody forgot the shovel for the nine inch hole. Might have been me. <clears throat> yeah, we're about 23, 24. 23, 24 inches of frost, so quite a bit. The other thing that I did not say, right here at the top of the flight, from the very tip, the top of the flight is 36 inches. We're gonna run each hole to the top of the flight. Therefore, each hole is gonna be the exact same depth. All right, wow. I don't know what the time was on that, but that was, that was definitely a lot faster. All right, let's switch augers and let's go, let's try another one. Uh, I think the next one we'll try is the rock auger. One thing to note in here, you're using the hex drive. And the reason that we use the hex drive is because the round drive, when it turns, you're actually putting all of your force and all your torque on the pin. That is simply what is holding all that torque in. No, absolutely not. Whereas if you go with a hex drive, it locks into your auger drive, and the only thing that you are using your pin for is to hold your auger to your auger drive. We're onto this one right here, which is the rock auger, and it's got the bolt teeth in it. And its intended purpose is that when it lands on a rock, that tooth is gonna sit there and spin inside that collar and chew on that rock, either until it grabs the rock and spits it out, or it passes through that rock. And it's got wider flighting to help spit the rock back out of the hole.
that was the rock auger on low flow or standard flow. Now he's going to go over just a little bit more and he's going to drill one more hole with the rock auger on high flow. He's getting into a little bit of rock. We knew that there's some down there, but there's not too much. Okay, so these were our first two. This was our solid formation auger. Uh, and the very first one, when he was going to standard flow, yeah, it was doing all right, but I'm pretty sure that we went like super mega fast in the high flow. But on the two that he just drilled, he went normal flow on this one and high flow on this one. We'll have to pull the time and double check and look. It sure seems like he went faster in low flow than he did in high flow with the 9 inch rock auger. Very interesting. Was not expecting that. Now let's move on to the dirt auger and we'll see what we get there. So this one right here is the dirt auger. You're going to use this one in good, good soil, but also you can use this one in rock too. If you're dealing with like sand and rock together, rock about that size, I'd still be looking for this one too. The drive that we're going to use today is Digga. This is our original very first Digga auger. And this thing probably has about 10,000 holes on it or more. And it has now been rebuilt just one time. We got parts for it, rebuilt it, and it's back in service. Let's get on with the show. We're on the dirt auger, just the dirt auger with the plain teeth. So he's gonna go ahead and drill one hole in, high, in low flow and drill another hole in high flow. Here we go. So that's very interesting. That one right there went a lot faster. We still had the same amount of rock. Uh, we can see that in the spoils that there's some rock there. We'll go ahead and do the next hole in the high flow and see if it goes faster or slower. That went a lot faster than these other two augers. Same ground conditions, right next to each other, right in a line. Same amount of rock, same amount of frost, but that one sure went a lot faster. Now we're gonna go ahead and switch out the teeth. We're gonna go to the carbide and see if we can get any faster, any slower, or if there's just gonna be about the same. We're just gonna show how aggressive this next one is. I mean, if you compare this one, this is what we have on now, but we're gonna go to this one. This one is a carbide fishtail or pilot bit. The other one is just a standard. This one is gonna outlive one like this. You're gonna get a lot more life out of this one, but be prepared because the cost of this one is probably almost three times the cost of this one. Make sure and see the links below on the carbides and the, the fishtails, the, the pilot bits. We wanna talk a little bit about what we do to our augers. And you can see it on kind of all three of these, how everything is all the thickened edge here. We take rebar and we take it all the way around the flighting of the auger. And we go back across that with some hard surfacing weld. This right here gets a lot of wear and tear. Right here we have a nine inch auger, but we could have an eight and then a seven because you're not maintaining this portion of the auger and it's then turning into an ice cream cone. And what you're gonna have is you're gonna have frost heaving of your post because it's that cone shape again. So auger maintenance is very, very critical if you haven't seen the auger maintenance video, make sure to see that video right over here. Pretty anxious to see if we're gonna go faster or if we're gonna get about the same time. Okay, hole number one with just normal flow. We'll see what happens.
So he went through the frost with no problem, but to get to that 36 inch depth, he ran into a little bit of rock, which slowed him up just a little bit, but not too bad. So he's gonna move over just a little bit and we'll see what happens. just make it seem like there's no frost in the ground whatsoever but we know that there is I think the dirt auger is the clear winner I think it's the golden ticket for digging in the frost in our ground conditions that we're in right now the dirt auger is 100% the winner if you're dealing with bad ground conditions make sure and see this video over here of digging in rocky ground if you're struggling and you can't figure it out and you're trying there's got to be a better way there is watch this video right here digging in rocky ground hope you guys enjoyed the results I hope you guys enjoyed the video Leave us a comment. If you guys do something different, if you guys use something different, let us know. Let us know what you do. We are Wyoming Fence Company, and we hope you have a good dang day. Okay, so we're going to do one more hole with the dirt auger with the carbide teeth on it, and that is because the operator, Alonzo, he said that he felt like he ran into a lot less frost in that last hole than he did throughout the rest of these. What do you know? He was 100% correct. From the very first hole we did where we have 24 inches of frost, in the very last hole, we only have 16 inches of frost. I don't, I don't get it either, okay? To make everything fair, we're gonna, he's gonna come over here and he's gonna punch one more hole in high flow and we're gonna see what happens. Did it even make a difference? I, I don't know, because that thing just whoosh, right through everything. And it didn't even show like it struggled to the frost. The dirt auger is still a solid clear winner in these kind of ground conditions. That's what I'd be reaching for and that's what I'd be using every time. So we told you we were gonna drill eight holes. We ended up drilling nine. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and leave us a comment. We are Wyoming's Fence Company and we hope you have a good dang day.